Well, I finally got around to buying it. The 1955 Mercedes W196R Grand Prix machine. My introduction to cars like this was, as I think I alluded to in my review for 1.54 on Thursday, more so in the like Toka Race Driver kind of era, Toka Race Driver 3, I believe it was, where there were a few of these kind of Silver Arrows era, that kind of stuff. Skinny little tires, massive engines, cool aerodynamics, but not necessarily too much downforce, if any. That was still, of course, a uh, magical thing back then that most people didn't even think about, but they were fascinating to drive. And much like the Honda Grand Prix car, which we already have in the game, although certainly not quite to that degree, it's amazing to see the roots of what would become Formula One. Now on paper, for a 20 million credit car, so if I recall, I think that might be the most expensive update car we've had, and certainly one of the most recent additions, in this case, I guess the most recent edition, actually to the High Rollers Club in with stuff like the you know, Ferrari 250 GTOs and all that kind of stuff, the Jaguar XJ13 which used to be 20 mil as well, this thing has to live up to a lot. On paper it sounds like a mixed bag, 835 kilos is certainly very good, as you'd expect it's front engine, rear wheel drive, naturally aspirated so nothing too special there. The power seems a bit low though, even by 1950 standards, 289 horses doesn't really sound like it's going to get your blood boiling. What I did find curious though, and one of the reasons why I was really keen to drive it, is they give it an unusually high point level, or it certainly seemed that way. 603 points is awfully high for a vintage car, a vintage race car at least like this. Certainly with less than 300 horsepower, and as many commented in my initial thoughts video, it's because it comes with racing hard tyres as standard, which makes so much more sense. Now, if you want more realism, you could slap some old comfort tyres on there, or maybe sports tyres. I wanted to drive it with what it came with, just to see what it's like straight out of the box. So this one that you can see me driving here, despite having that slightly different and certainly not accurate SLR style livery, it's standard otherwise. Now you can actually tune it as well, for those who are wondering. Most notably, you can actually convert it to turbo aspiration and get up around, I think it was 512 horsepower, if I recall correctly, with the mid-range turbo. And again, unless I'm mistaken, and correct me in the comments if I'm remembering this wrong, I'm pretty sure when I checked you could have the low-range turbo or a mid-range, no high-end. Which is a bit unfortunate for a car like this, where you'd probably think of it as being more of a top end kind of thing but even so 500 horses now in an 800 kilo car that's probably more like what you'd be expecting it to have to begin with kind of auto union streamliner style now i'm gonna have two verdicts on this car because from what i've seen it's been very very positively received by those who bought it and those who haven't seem for the most part from comments to really dislike how long it's going to take to get a car like this and it feels like a cheap way of dragging out the game. I can see both points of view. I'm more so toward the former because yeah sure it takes a bit longer to afford the car but even if you do one Le Mans event a day that's 800 grand. There are a couple of really good bonus events at the moment which you can easily win a million each for. So even if you do the one Le Mans event a day you can still have the car in under a month and that's just bare minimum kind of thing. Although I am defending the idea of the car costing that much, I would not say that if you're the kind of person who doesn't care about classic or vintage racers, then it probably still won't be the car for you. You may really love how it drives, because it honestly does feel, with those racing tyres in particular, like a much more modern Grand Prix car. It can actually rival the Honda, to be honest, in terms of how good the handling is. I might even prefer it. That doesn't mean it's worth 20 million for everyone. You have to be the kind of person who likes this side of things. You know, your Shelby Daytonas, Jag XJ13s, those really expensive, iconic cars. If you're not into those anyway, then I don't think this is necessarily going to be the car that wins you over. Over because yes it's good but so are a lot of those others as well. From what I've seen from people who do love the car I've still seen the sentiment of it being pretty good for racing but still not necessarily amazing. So again if you're talking cost effectiveness well it, it simply isn't. 20 million compared to what you'll earn from it you might be able to earn that back but there are way way easier ways of spending 20 mil and having a whole swath of cars that you can do more with. So this is very much a, a fan's car. It's an aficionado's car. For the vast majority of players no you don't need to buy it. You will love it if you do, but you don't need to. As with many exotic or classic vehicles, it's more of a want than a need. For those who do want it, I'm very happy to say you will not be disappointed. The only thing which I've seen a few people mentioning as a slight downside is how janky looking the rev gauge is, where it kind of jumps up rather than having a smooth motion. I'm not sure if the real car had that or not, I'm presuming not. It, it does give it quite a cool kind of clockwork sort of look to it, where it is ragged and jagged looking, but I would imagine they're probably going to sort that out. And I've seen some similar sentiments for the Porsche even, so it could just be a couple of bugs that have arrived with this particular update. It's an astonishingly nice car to drive. It's 
way better than I expected it to be. The tyres, of course, doing a huge amount of heavy lifting on that one. But in terms of racing, well, to the surprise of pretty much no one, no, you don't necessarily need to buy it. And for those who might be curious about potentially, you know, waiting a few months and seeing if the price changes, don't. I'll save you the time of waiting. It, it ain't going down. <laughs> this car is not going to go anywhere but 20 mil, and since 20 mil is the max, that's where it's going to stay. So we'll have to see in March what other vehicles do change, and some might go cheaper, but that very rarely happens. It always seems to be the opposite. So for those of us who are, myself certainly included, fans of vintage and classic racing cars, it's a lovely addition. Certainly a great one for Mercedes. A first proper high roller, in fact, off the top of my head, I think, for Mercedes unless they brought the patent motor wagon back and I would unironically love it if they made that thing look a hundred million just for no apparent reason <laughs> I think that'd be a hilarious meme aside from something like that for now it's a proper high rollers Mercedes which is very cool and in addition to hearing your thoughts down in the comments for those who maybe wanted to hear or see more of just the car without the commentary I did a video just for that earlier on today you can see gameplay cockpit and chase cam to really get a feel for the car again here at the Nordschleifer so of course that's it for this review stick around again tomorrow for for my decidedly less positive thoughts, I will say, for the Porsche Mission X. But for now, I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.